it takes you. It's the Runners Club podcast. You know, I'm not even going to tell you what episode it is because you already know. You're tuning in now, you know. Beautiful. You, you waited a week and we're back. <laughs> <laughs> I have earphones in for the first time so I can hear what we're recording. It's legitimately the weirdest thing I am experiencing because I hear you yeah. right now. Right. And a fraction of a second later... It's right here in my in ear. your ear, right? It's a crazy echo. You ever call somebody and you get that 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 echo feel? You yeah. instantly need to hang up. I say hang up, call me back. And so I, this is a we're hang not up, doing this. Back yeah. Right now. So you're about to do that for the entire podcast? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because you're, you're a producer, you know, you didn't put together the podcast. Yeah. Making you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know sure we're all right. <laughs> and we gotta we gotta we gotta make things easier for Jeremy because. Ooh, I, he, he's doing a, a phenomenal job Facts. editing a podcast and everything. Yeah. But then he'll drop it and he'll be like, look, there was some noise in the background. I did the best that I could. I'm but like, y'all need to get it together. I appreciate it. That's exactly yeah. what he wants to say. <laughs> but Jeremy is such a nice guy. He will roast you at any given second. But for the most part, he's a really nice, genuine person. So I don't think he will legitimately tell me if I'm doing something wrong or mm. trying to correct me. He'll just like talk about my sneakers next time I see him. Like right. <laughs> Passive aggressive. Yes. <laughs> yes. But um, so I got some headphones in. We're going to make it work, especially for this episode, because this is a special episode for us. Right. Um, do we want to, we did not talk about this prior to starting the podcast. Yeah. Do we want to go into our updates first? Yeah. And then go into why this episode is so special? Yeah. And the only reason why we're, we're saying what we're saying is because we do have a special guest in, in the studio today. Yes. <laughs> and you know, but yes, let's get into our updates real quick and then we can, and then we can let y'all know who is with us. Yes, it, that, that also feel, when I when other podcasts do it, I yeah. feel like it's also very weird yeah. that somebody else is sitting in a room, really quiet. Because this is an intimate time, you know, that you and you and I share on a weekly okay. basis now. So yeah, to awesome. be to be seen. Yes. Is is our, our, our guest is our a voyeur yeah. into our intimate time and our yeah, intimate space. <laughs> right <laughs> behind the scenes. Okay, so uh, Ian, what, what's going on in your world? Um. In the last week, I have been surviving. Mm-hmm. It was awesome. Um, the Fourth July, the f- July Fourth weekend, amazing. Saw fireworks on the third. Um, fourth, fifth, and sixth. Uh, yeah, the fourth, <laughs> fifth, and sixth. All the yeah. days. On the fourth, because I was out in the suburbs with Clinetta's mm-hmm. uh, family and whatnot. And first of all, that block the level of budgeting they did for their fireworks was crazy. Yeah. Okay, like I saw fireworks on a third at Navy Pier, but in the suburbs, at the end of the block, some family had like city level grade fireworks. Uh, Like one box shot off 13 fireworks and it was like, the legitimate ones, like the reds, the blues, the the ones that like would shoot up in the air, go explode, and go tss. and then sprinkle down. <laughs> yeah, like they had sprinkle down fireworks. Like I, I thought you like needed a government job to get those. Like how? Nah, that was definitely illegal. It had to be. Yo, it was crazy. It was, it was so crazy that the police department in that suburbs pulled up. I bet they did. Saw what was going on, got out of their car. They, the people did not stop lighting the fireworks. They lit the fireworks, <laughs> saw the level of professionality these fireworks were, got back in their car, and left. Mm-mm. It was like, what do, you do it, you. <laughs> are we going to shut down this production? Like, is this... A, obviously, people bought tickets to see these, to see these fireworks. <laughs> obviously. So, that was fun. But when I was driving back into the city, there was a, there was a fog over the city. It's like... You come in, because we were from around the south suburbs, so you come in, you would cross um, the 95th Red Line stop, Mm -hmm. and you just saw, like, a cloud of smoke over the city, and it was crazy. But um, I'm going to pat myself on the back. This is the first time I went to Glenetta's father's house and did not fall asleep. Yes, me and Glenetta uh, in a relationship for, like, about five or six years, Okay. And every year, we've only gone there for, I think, Thanksgiving, maybe Christmas Eve, he cooks, amazing cook. 
Every year that I've gone to this man's house, I have been asleep. It's so much so that he legitimately laid out a blanket for me this time like, when I visit. We know the deal. Like, we know he's gonna follow. Is it like the food coma? I think it is. Yeah. It's also, he has a really low level lighting in his house. Like it's, it's, it's a like vibe. it's like at any moment they can go from hosting family to boom chicka wama. <laughs> you know, like at any given second. He's a grown <laughs> man. The, yeah, that's the like, lighting yeah. in his house. Okay? <laughs> and then it's like the the macaroni is a special. His ribs are special. So it's like this comfort food that just brings you in. And he has his one big chair. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's like, I don't know. I, I don't even think it should be classified as a chair. That's how huge and plush it is. But it's not yet a love seat. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's crazy. And I'm sleeping. Brings you in, feeds you, puts you to sleep. Every single year. Okay. This is the first time when we were able to enjoy each other, have a couple beers, have a conversation. I've talked to him outside of yeah. his house. Right. <laughs> but in his house, I come there to sleep every year. Some of the best sleep I get all year. Wow. Some of the best. There's people who came to the house, who come to the house every year that I met for the first time this time. <sighs> okay? <laughs> it's, it's, that was, that's my update. I stayed up. I say it loud. He was like, you know, I really enjoyed your company this time. <laughs> and I was like, you know what? Me too. <laughs> Me too. Yeah. But other than that, I got bit on the forehead by a mosquito, so I've been hydrocortisoned up. Where is that? Right here. Oh, yeah. It's gone now. It's gone now. Hydrocortisone and ice. You know, I think, I don't know if everybody has it in their house and stuff like but that. They should. If I've been in your bathroom for too long, I'll check your medicine. That, that who doesn't do but, that? Let's just hold pause. Yes. Who does not? I mean, if you spend enough, if you go to someone's bathroom, I mean, I let, look, I'm exposing myself at this point. Yes. I have checked. And have you what seen I mine? will say, um, I, I, I felt comfortable at just about 75% of the black women. Any black woman over 35 has hydrocortisone in their medicine cabinet. And I appreciate you because I feel safe. It feels familiar. I feel like... So I'm, you didn't look at my cabinet? I No. Okay. I did not look in your cabinet. Do you have hydrocortisone? It's a whole bunch of face masks and uh, face mists. I, I mean, I expect that, but do you have like, hydrocortisone? Yeah, somewhere. Yeah, somewhere. It might not be in the cabinet because that's like all of my stuff. That's Matthew has nothing in there but his tooth toothbrush. <laughs> <laughs> He's got the table on the side. Okay. <laughs> I, did, I did not check yours. Okay. I did not check yours. Yeah. Y'all also your bathroom is right by the living room, so I do feel like you would have heard me about it. Yeah. Open anything. It's all good. Yeah. Well, okay. I give you. Time. I give you permission. Okay. I will. I might take photos. What? <laughs> Clown me. Yeah. I be great. How was your week? Uh, the week has been good. I'm trying to honestly think about what had happened, but I guess it was the 4th of July. Um, I went to a barbecue and met up with some friends and actually saw my friend's baby for the first time. He's seven months old and she's like the type to not put her baby on social media. Like she'll, you can see her baby, but like just her, his arm. Just the back of his head. <laughs> like, you're not gonna see his face. Is this you're not baby? gonna get your energy on that baby, okay? <laughs> like, there's no way. <laughs> so, yeah, finally met the baby in person. Real cute, real just calm, like, seriously, just like a Buddha baby, like, chilling the entire time. I love it. You know, when you can really tell a baby has, like, everything that they need, and if they even make a fuss for a second, they'll still have everything that they need, so then they don't actually ever fuss. That's that baby. That's that baby. Yeah. He just needs to be heard sometimes. Every, you know, every now and then he might, uh, but then it's done. So okay. very, very good. Definitely. I mean, we was on the South side, so, you know, people were putting together their own. It was a lot of like bought fireworks, but then it was also homemade fireworks. So many, it was like bombs going off. Oh, them half a stick of dynamite? Yes. I bombs bombs i hate those if well, in, while you're doing a barbecue bombs next door yes honestly like if there was ever something that just made my mind break and i became a vigilante i would only strike 
during the month of June and July <laughs> when they're setting off half a stick of dynamite. Are yeah. you trying to build a tunnel? Like, <laughs> what are we doing here? Is this construction? Why? It doesn't even do nothing. There's no lights. There's no smoke. It just sounds. It just goes boom. That's it. Yeah. yeah. They just want. They just wanted to light it up and make it go boom, and that's what they did. So yes, completely, but I, I completely understand. I hate it. Um, I, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm trying to figure out what I'm gonna drink next. One of these smoothies or, or the, one of these beers. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> we got we got options. Uh, and I'll say the last thing is, you know, I'm already thinking about my birthday, and I booked the Airbnb for my birthday, and I accidentally sent it to you, Ian. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. And, um, that was for your birthday? Yeah, well, it wasn't. It was for my friend's birthday. And I said, you know what? She's missing out. She says it's not her style. I'm going to book this for my birthday, which is not until December. But now I'm good. Like, I know what I'm doing. So, <laughs> this is a beautiful Airbnb home, you know. <laughs> you, um, you, you, sent, you did send my, it to me. It was like, you definitely felt like you were probably talking to I was your girlfriend. I was like, that. this would be great. We can go here on your birthday. It's fantastic. She's like, oh, no. This is not really this fun. I'm like, girl. I saved that. I do you see these white walls? Beautiful. Do you see the aesthetic? Like, what? What do you need? So, it's mine now. It's ours. That's it. That's all I got. I love it. Yeah. I love it. Okay, I'm happy. That was really quick because usually our updates are legitimately 30 minutes. Yep. And stuff like that. But I'm excited to get past that and everything because I want to introduce our amazing guest that we have on. This is the first time we're having a guest on the podcast. Yeah. You feel me? So get used to it. Yes, yes, yes. Um I don't even know what to say. Let's scoot over, scoot over, scoot over. I got you. Okay. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Let like, me do the intro, bro. This is <laughs> Okay. Like, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, nah, okay, look, who we have with us today is the coach that we always talk about, but you never really hear from yourself because, you know, we haven't had her on yet. And, you know, and she, you know, like, okay, now I don't even know what to say. Right, the, because the there's coach so of the many, hour, there's too many The coach things. that you've heard a lot about and the coach that you ought to know, the coach that you can come to with questions, the coach you can go to for support, you know what I mean? She's a Nike coach. She's a business owner, entrepreneur, teacher, dog owner, mother. You know what I mean? Runner. Period. First of Athlete. all. Athlete. Um, redhead. Redhead. Okay. Okay. Awesome. I mean, I love it. Leader. Coach Robin. Yeah. Right here. <laughs> I mean, I, it's this. The, when I first met you at the Nike Chicago run, and stuff like that like I legitimately felt like I was meeting a celebrity and stuff like that it was a few years ago I think it was like I, the first time uh, Nike since NRC had done like a run and it was out of the downtown store and I was running next to you and the whole time I didn't feel like I could approach you mind you a very approachable woman but at that point in time I was like mm, no I'm not going up to her but I was running and I know you don't remember this at all, but like we was running together and you were talking to somebody else. This is how this is how much of a coach she is and how good of a coach she is and how good she is at her job. She was having a conversation with somebody else. And in the middle of that conversation, she turns to me because I'm on her left side and says, you're breathing too shallow. How did you hear me breathing while running and having a conversation with someone else? And um, honestly, <sighs> since then, my breathing has been on point because she taught me how to run. She didn't yeah. slow me down. She didn't do anything. She would just like fill up your stomach. And I, I, I tell any runner that because I listen to it now. You can hear ever it. Ever since that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I tell them the same thing you told me. Breathe into your belly, full breaths, you know, and, and control your breathing because controlling your breathing is controlling your heart rate and so on and so forth, controlling your pace and stuff like that. And that's how I met you. Yeah. That's how I realized your level of skill and I've gravitated you, gravitated towards you ever ever since then, ever since that I met you then. And that's what made me feel like, yo, like, because I've met other running coaches and they're cool. But they not coach right. That's so yes. kind. <laughs> I can't welcome. believe I'm the first. Yes. This is a big deal. Coach Robin, y'all. Coach Robin, y'all. So, first of all, just welcome. welcome. Thank you. Yes. 
I have yes. been biting my tongue. I had to take pictures <laughs> because I'm laughing so hard. When I listen to the podcast, like I'm in stitches. I mean, I told them like a couple examples where I had literally have to stop running because I'm giggling so damn hard. Um, yeah, that was really hard to be quiet. <laughs> I love the updates. Keep them along. This is, along. this is why podcasts do an interview and then later on or at a different time do like their, like the other part of the podcast because it is difficult. You know what I mean? But, you know, this is free-flowing. Y'all know it's, you know, we improve as we go. Yes, yes. (laughs) This is our first guest. And I feel like it's an honor to have you here, Ramen, honestly. Because, like Ian said, like, I I mean, for me, I'll just say I was oblivious to a lot of things when I first met you. Because uh, we... We sat next to each other at dinner. Yeah, because I... And again, I came to dinner. That was so fun. Yeah. Okay, so, can we... Yeah. So, that was 2019... In like the beginning of the year, yeah, like it was March. Like, still kind of cold. Yeah, it was really cold. Yeah, and like by then, like not like Nike was about to uh, like they wanted to sponsor the, the run club that I hadn't started yet, and so um, invited me to this dinner, and it was a Nike Nike running dinner, and Coach Bennett was there, which is huge. It was a big dinner. It was an awesome. Dinner. Yeah, and I didn't even and again I didn't really realize the gravity or the importance of it. I knew it was important because it was Nike, but then I like because I was oblivious to like the the running world at the time. I didn't really understand the faces. I just knew that every I felt like everybody was important, but I couldn't really tell you like who did what. And it was why. also very dark in the room. It was dark. <laughs> it and was very dark. Yeah, it was. You know, and so I would say like. I remember seeing you there and I remember coach Bennett and, and then I feel like from there we connected, but I don't know if we actually talked. Did we talk? We, we talked were... a little bit during dinner because we actually yeah. had a really good table. I remember being like, yeah, yeah. they gave us a good table. Yeah. <laughs> they gave us a good table and they were like, oh, this is Courtney. She's looking to start a run group at Hyde Park. And I'm like, oh yeah, we need that. Let's talk. <laughs> Um, and I, I think we talked just initially about run clubs and how the heck to get people to show up and yeah. how to start it and how to maybe set a program and a race for a group. Yeah. But I mean, I remember, I remember almost like what you were wearing. Oh, I was, I was completely dressing correctly. No, I, you no. were dressed well. No. Okay. I was like, I'm There's, in stretchy look, things. I was, <laughs> I you yeah, no, because, a couple episodes yeah, ago. okay, well then y'all yeah, already I know. I remember hearing you say that yeah. and I'm like, no, Courtney just looked like she had her shit together. I, <laughs> I'm like, no, I was like, <laughs> y'all, I don't have no run clothes. I was, ooh, you know what I mean? Yeah, it was a while. It was funny. I just remember I leaving know, with everybody my, like, was there, look. was dressed in their finest running garments. Yeah. <laughs> and here I come in a white button up. Yeah. <laughs> right. right. This just came out. <laughs> like, <laughs> these just dropped. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. It, that yeah. feels so long ago. It yeah. was only two years ago? Uh, three almost because we're going into our third year of, of um, that makes Gumbo sense. Fit and it was 2019. So, yeah, well, like, all of 2000. Right. And then we're into our third year, yeah, so. Um, But, I I mean, I feel like to start, I I want people to know who you are, who don't know who you are. Um, And and I would just love for you to introduce yourself first before we start asking you questions. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man, I'm bad at my self-intro. Yeah. (laughs) So, Robin Lalonde, um, you know, it's, it's do Lalonde. Lalonde. Sometimes I call my husband Lalonde as a joke, but it's that's I right. I call you Lalonde. Lalonde. I like that. <laughs> right. That, that was me too. I was like, this is yeah. definitely French. <laughs> Lalonde. Um, my maiden name is only four letters. It's very simple. <laughs> my very name is high maintenance with two double letters. Um, yeah. So I, I think first and foremost, I'm a run coach and I've been doing run and triathlon coaching for, probably like 12 years at this point um you know own edge athlete lounge we're almost seven years old so at the beginning of august we'll be seven which is crazy wow also kind of feels like 20 (laughs) for the last two years (laughs) um in a good way in a good way lots of knowledge gained um yeah i i'm definitely identify most as a runner as an athlete and i i think that it's the power of of what we do um it's what gets me most excited a lot of the times and, you know, just makes me pumped. I mean, it's how we're connected, right? It's like that ribbon that kind of ties us all together. Uh, yeah. Nike run club coach. I've been with Nike for six and a half years. I coached the wind runners team, which is the sub elite women's development team here out of Chicago, which has just been a huge, huge, huge opportunity in the last few years. And frankly, no one else is doing it. And it feels really good to fill that space. 
Um, big dog lover. Yeah. I will hug a dog at mm. any time. Probably kiss and, it, even if it doesn't want to be kissed. And threaten us to the three in a row at every given chance. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I is, love She's threatened to kidnap August. I always, August like, is adorable. I DM Lynette, and I'm like, if he goes missing, I have him. Okay. Period. <laughs> I mm-hmm. love the stories of him on the track. I was like, ooh, I would have scooped him up and got off of him. <laughs> <laughs> I love that kid. I love him. I love him. I love a good time, yeah. But, I mean, I've been in Chicago for a long time, since like 2004, which is the longest I've stayed put anywhere. And, you know, I know we have our struggles just like any other big city, but I feel like we're on the brink of something amazing, and I just, frankly, feel really privileged to be a part of it. Yeah. Yeah, the the... The running community in this city is is transforming so crazy right now. Um, yeah, yeah, legitimately, it's it's uh, uh, with Edge Lounge. I feel like Edge Lounge, Heartbreak, and then um, and this is anybody listening, please. This does not take away from your run crew. This is my personal perception of what I see, but I, I do feel like Heartbreak. Edge Lounge and Gumbo Fit is really curating the city in such a way. And it's these are the drivers and the movers for the just the energy of what the running community is becoming, what was from taking our races into our own hand, creating programming for runners to get into training and stuff like that. And and retail space and just all of that. Like these are the places where the communities are being built and the blueprint for what a running community should look like in the city of Chicago are being built. Mm. And there's so much like fun shifting going on too, which I mean, I guess in the past I always looked at it like as a bad thing of, of change is a bad thing. And then mm. COVID happened. It's like, Oh no, everybody's going everywhere. It's fine. Just throw everything in the trash. Right. <laughs> right. Start over. <laughs> and for me, seeing, you know, things like the self-start races and, you know, the run crews that are growing. And, I mean, I DM'd, like, Kelsey McKinney today, and I was like, holy moly. The size of the track? This, yeah, the size of the track run last night. I was like, how fantastic is that? Um, I mean, I remember you talking about, I think it was that Instagram Live, Courtney, that you did that really just captured my heart and my mind um, with, what was with you? Yeah. It was right right as the George Floyd stuff was happening and you were just talking oh, about, yeah. Yeah. I forget the title of it, but I think it was on your personal page. It wasn't even yeah. on the Fit page. Mm-hmm. And I listened to it like three times. I made Brian listen to it in the car and then I listened to it again and it was just like, just kept kind of like speaking to me of like what what we want to do with running and what it should be like. And you said, like, I want that big group shot, right? And when I saw the picture last night, I was like, I got goosebumps. I was like, you did it. You got the big group shot. Like, the momentum has has happened. And how fantastic is that? Like, a year later, not only to be open as a, from mm-hmm. a COVID perspective, right? And thank right, right. God we're there, right? We have yeah. arrived. Um, but also just the fact that, like, your group has gotten to that point is just, it's exceptional. And, and frankly, it's exactly like what happens when you put your energy towards something, right? You just more good attracts always more good. Yeah, most definitely. I love that. I love that. And even the way you're talking, uh, kind of reminds me because I, of course I was doing my Googles and everything I said earlier, (laughs) but, um, I found your favorite mantra. And so it's, um, you are stronger than you think you are, and you can go farther than you think you can. And it's I in the was, bathroom. I just saw it. It is in the bathroom. It is <laughs> the bathroom. on the mirror edge. Yeah. Literally <laughs> the on jet? the mirror. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. I, so the minute I read that, my question to you was: Is is that was that an ideal that you just had growing up as a kid, or was there a defining moment? where you may have passed, surpassed your, what you thought your limitations at that point was and you realize, no, I can go further than I think I can. Was there a That's moment a where that happened? That's a question. Um, so I told, that quote is definitely Ken Schluber's quote. He's the founder of the Leadville Race Series and he's like 
anything that he quotes, just listen to it because it's awesome. Yeah. I love he it. also starts all of his races off with a rifle shot, which is like hilariously Colorado, right? <laughs> America. <laughs> yeah. He's like, I'm from a mining community. Um, he's, he's an awesome guy. Um, I actually think that it goes back to our first Iron Man, and I remember I was really terrified of that distance and was one of those things. I said I'd never do, and then I did it, and I was, I, I had a meltdown that race morning of, like, just freaking out, like, I don't know if I can do this. I was always, like, a shorter distance athlete, and, of mm. course, I trained and did everything my coach told me to do, but I'm sitting there in the dark, you know, ready to go into this black water, like, can I do this? And um, my husband was great and threw some headphones in my ears with, it's going to be a good night, mm. right? And so every time I hear that song, I have a complete flashback. And I remember I was really controlled ever since the the gun went off, like at the start and my heart rate lowered. And I was like, I'm going to be an Iron Man today. And I was like, am I seriously saying that to myself? <laughs> um, because it's, it's interesting when you do that distance or any kind of ultra distance, you don't do the distance training, right? Similar to when you race a marathon, you don't yeah, do you, marathon. You almost, yeah. you almost get yeah. there, but you wouldn't right, not do quite, the whole right? thing. Because yeah. you would trash yourself yeah. for race day, right? Of course. Yeah. Um, now we know that, right? But mm. you always question it. Yeah. And I remember where I was on the run course where I ran past the runner. I was right around a 10K in, and I just transcended where I was as a runner. Yeah. And I remember almost thinking, I'm running past the runner I thought I was. I'm running past the athlete I thought I was. So I was done with my 1.2 mile swim, 112 mile bike. And then all of a sudden, like the last 20 miles of this marathon, I was like picking up speed somehow. Yeah. And I'm like, wow. what the hell happened out here? Right. But I just kind of leaned into the process and I was like, I don't even know who I am anymore, but I'm just going to go with it. I'm going to take Coca-Cola at every single aid station, right? And and to get that little lift and feel really good and strong and not question it. And I literally sprinted through the finish and I thought immediately I want to do it again. Yeah. Oh, or what? I want to do something again. And, right. and, and what else can I do? And it was that moment that really made me think, not only do I want to live in the endurance world, but I also want to coach the endurance world. I had a really fantastic coach that told me like you naturally coach people. You need to go and get your certifications and told me which ones to get. Um, and I think when I saw the quote from Ken Kluber, I was like, Whoa, this That's is exactly yeah. what happened at 10 K into that. Iron Man. <laughs> is that all of a sudden, yeah, I am stronger than I thought I was. And That's I can amazing. go farther than I can ever yeah. thought I could go before. Yeah. That's, Do you, how many, uh, have you, how many, what, what are your races? What are the races you have underneath your belt? Like what is, I, we've only ever did one Ironman because after that we got into ultras and it was like, at the time my husband had a really insane job. And so he got really overwhelmed with that training, like from a health perspective. So we're like, my big idea was like, well, let's just get into ultras. Yeah. Let's just do ultra marathons instead yeah. of Ironmans. Yeah. Um, so then we started getting into 50 mile, hundred K races. Um, and then the kind of shortly after that, like opened edge. And that was, you know, that took a little bit of, of effort and now obviously have a little bit more time so we can start to ease back into those distances again, which is fun. Well, how many marathons have you done? Ugh. That's a great question. Do you have, I mean, so that means a lot. I don't know. No, not necessarily that many. Um, I, more than 10. How many cities? Wait. Ugh. First of all. Wait. <laughs> she started that sentence with, uh, I don't know about many. many. <laughs> Any, well, ten is many. It's hard because when lot. you're training, right? Because I'll like pace my runner sometimes for a marathon, right? For their marathon, and then it's you know they're trying to be cute, and I'll I'll pace. When you them pace, in. did you get a medal? Yes, of course. Right. Okay, so you ran. I a marathon. should count this up though. You're right. I should. I should. Yeah. I should. You, you should want to know. That people want yes. to know. The, all, for every medal that you got, that was a marathon yes. that you ran. No, 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 no. It counts. A hundred percent. It counts. I just don't know if I have a count. Oh, like you're talking about? You were a pacer of like with the stick. Right. And the no, time. no, no. I just ran with them. Oh. Registered and ran with yeah. them. Yeah. Okay, okay. Right, but like if or or we would do sign up for a marathon as like a training run for a longer race, yeah. and, but we're not necessarily racing it. We're just. Running, running it to get support. miles and make sure we can like right. train our guts for nutrition yeah. right yes for so, anybody who's doing yeah. their first marathon or just thinking that a marathon is the summit no it's not there's people <laughs> it, who it's run a big, marathons the marathon's still a big deal yeah. there are people 
who run marathons <laughs> as a training run for their actual race. But we're not, when that's happening, we're not doing it at our true potential. To race a marathon at your true potential is incredibly difficult. My hardest distance is a half marathon. Really? That Why is do you my say that? virtual hell. Because you're like sub threshold for like 90 minutes. <laughs> it's terrible. Yeah. It's like, especially 90 to 120 minutes of just hard running, that's incredibly difficult. But when you use it as a training run for something longer, you can run it a lot slower. You're, yeah, your heart rate's easy. slower. You're, you're just trying to like basically use a supported training run, right? Mm -hmm. It's not, you're not actually testing the limits of your potential by any means. Yeah. Okay. I love it. I love it. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. So before you got into endurance running, was was running always your sport or did you have another love for a sport? Yeah, growing up, I was really into ballet, which, so, you know, like, might not have the perfect build for that, right? <laughs> but <laughs> posture, though. <laughs> Form. Um, um, and definitely ballet was like the first thing that I got into. It was the only form of dance that, mm -hmm. that I ever did. And I had a great instructor as well. Um, and then as probably as young as like eight got into swimming okay. and was like a pretty competitive breaststroker. And then in middle school, got more into running. And I had a best friend who was also a runner. We would always you know, be on four by four together. And I was 400, 800. Um, I was definitely more into running. And it was interesting because I loved ballet but you you didn't really converse except for before and after right in the, mm -hmm. in the kind of get ready area and with swimming awesome camaraderie but there's also not a lot of discussion happening during practice because your face is in the yeah, water, water right, right. <laughs> right of and it's really they're very cohesive teams but it tends to happen outside of the practice and then all of a sudden when i was on track i was like oh, we can talk during, right? We can like, <laughs> you know, I can hear the coach audibly and I, I got really into it. And I think even like by sophomore year, like I was like, I wanted to be a captain of the team. And wow. it was, um, I had really good coaches, both for swimming and running, but I think I excelled a little bit more at running just because. The I, interest was there. I, I, and I loved the camaraderie that happened really, really naturally. Yeah. So just even in middle school or yeah. grammar school, you were like community around it. <laughs> well, it, they were just my friends, right? Yeah. We had yeah. like, I, I grew up at like a very diverse high school, which was, I thought was normal, but apparently it wasn't. And okay. <laughs> like, now that like, I look at like suburban high schools, I'm like, oh, this is the opposite. Okay. <laughs> um, and I just, I really loved having you know, that sweat bond, we always say at edge, like on mm -hmm. the sweat bond. And I feel like I felt at that very, very young, specifically when it came to track. Yeah. Um, and I just, I loved, I loved, you know, going to the meets and going to state and serving on those relays. And those were the bonds. I mean, my best friend in the whole wide world is still someone that I ran, you know, high school track with. And, uh, and she's the one who got me into longer distances and, you know, it's a sweat bond. I mean, I, I use that term sometimes and people outside of the running community, like they laugh at it because they think I'm joking. And I'm just like, no, like, no, like, and I, I think even it, like deep down inside, like I'll never say this outside of this because even my friends who don't run, they don't really listen to this podcast. So I can say what I want to say. <laughs> um, but like my running community, like the captains and like Ian, it's like y'all are becoming my best friends. Y'all are my best friends. I'm her best friend. I love y'all. I think elective <laughs> suffering. No. <laughs> no. You're my best friend. <laughs> elective suffering is what I talk about when I, we talk about, like, whether it's strength training or, or run training or triathlon training or cycling training or swim training. It is a big deal when you're an adult to electively make yourself uncomfortable, whether right. it's from distance or speed, says a lot about someone's character. Then... When we go and bring that to a tribe or a group or a community and we do it together, I mean, that is a very, very, very sacred bond. Yeah. And I think I never knew about it until we got into longer distance stuff and, and really trained with a group. I had always kind of trained um, like on my own or with my husband a little bit. And I used like online programs, which there's nothing wrong with that. But I always thought, oh, maybe I'll get sick of people if I'm on the bike with them for like five hours at a time, right? <laughs> and it was the complete opposite where all of a sudden we were getting done with things and I just wanted like 
more and more and more. Yeah. And we felt incredibly connected. Mm -hmm. And that is really what, what like propelled me to want to not only like be a coach, but like create a space for that and, and and have four walls to kind of encapsulate people into that because it is, it's sacred, right? Well, I mean, so, and that's exactly what I was going to get into next was like how you started edge and like, I mean, you just explained it, but I mean, I mean, and and that's, I, I would say like, just going back to gumbo fit specifically, like, um, this cohort of 25 individuals, like this is a, and I, and I try not to get super like mushy about it with everyone, but yeah, it's like, this is for, especially the people who are running their first marathon, huge. This is something that they're going to remember forever. And it's like, yeah, we're five weeks in and it's like, and it's going to speed up quick. And and it's like, I know people are really going to cherish this time when they look back at any other like training that they do, because this has really set them up in a way where like they know how to train correctly now. Um, so yeah, please tell us more about edge and like all that you offer here. I'm I'm already so excited about the cohort. Like I (laughs) geek out and don't, don't like, I always joke that I don't have emotions, right? Like, and I don't have feelings because I won't acknowledge other people's feelings, especially when they're like, it hurts. So I'm like, just shut up and run. Mm -hmm. Um, (laughs) but it is a big deal to do what you're doing from a cohort perspective. I mean, we had an epic a couple years ago group and actually think this year is going to rival that group without a doubt. And I cried at our, at our like team pot, like the Friday before the marathon, like I literally like got choked up telling them how much it mattered that they showed up for each other and that they, they did the hard thing and it, it just, it just matters. And it's so cool. And it's awesome that you see that five weeks in, right? Because yeah. you're like, oh, man. I already know. Yeah, yeah. I'm you better just, like, just. I can't yeah. talk about it too much because yeah. I'll already choke up. But, like, yeah. yeah, it's literally all of that. And I just see it. And I'm and I, like, I just know. And I know that a lot of them know it, too, because so many of them have already ran with each other so long within Gumbo that it's, like, the bond was already there. But now it's different. <laughs> It's leveled so, up, yeah. It's leveled up, and, and, and also they've met new people because we brought in a few new people, and they've just fit so well. Oh, I love so, it. I can see it happening. Yeah. Like, even today I drove in, and, like, I saw it still happening, and yeah. I was like, well, I'm just going to park in the in the indoor parking, but I see you. I see you it happening. <laughs> um, um, but, yeah, yeah, tell us about, like, Edge. And- yeah, how, how it started. So we, again, training for, like, our first endurance races, we started working with a coach and started working with a group, and it was a group of, like, seven, eight people maybe. And, you know, Brian and I kind of thought like, okay, we'll do this. Like, we'll try it. Like, okay. Like, well, you, well, we don't know how to do this. We don't, we've never gone up to this distance before. Tell us how to do it. Right. We looked at it from like a service. What can you provide? And instead, um, we were on these longest rides and longest runs with people. And we, would notice that we just wanted to hang out with them more. And so we would get down with something and we would, you know, go out for burgers and beer, which isn't the, like the worst thing in the world, but we kept thinking to ourselves, like, awesome. We want to ride the high of like this amazing workout or this amazing set hitting our long assistances, but we don't necessarily have an outlet for it. And also, yeah what are we doing? Like, do we want to have burgers and beer? Like, is this what we should be doing yeah. with our bodies? It was just the most week? accessible thing. Exactly. Yeah. So we thought like, well, we could like build something for athletes. Right. So started off with like a much bigger, I don't know. A lot of people actually don't know that we had like a 20,000 square foot facility actually to start. Wow. And we had investors and it was just like a lot of different cooks in the kitchen. And it was really great from a collaboration standpoint, but it was hard to get them to kind of all, say yes. Yeah. And I remember very vividly going to Brian and saying, I don't know if this is going to happen on this scale. Like, I don't know if we can like, you know, like build a pool and like have all of these different kind of boxes that we need to tick. What would happen if we did it ourselves? What would happen if we used our savings? You know, what, how many square feet could we even afford? Like what would be our focus? And we brought it and we scaled it way back and said, you know, like, this is what we could do. And I think from that conversation to open was like 13, 14 months. So we brought it back to community, honestly. And you know, the word is completely overused, but that's fine. Cause it fucking matters. Yeah. Um, 
Sorry. It means something. <laughs> yeah. It's rude. And, you know, we started off with a lot more kind of training room in the in our proposed, you know, like space plan. And then our recovery was like a couch. <laughs> it was like a two-seater, right? And then we were training, I think, for the, our first or second 50-miler maybe at the time. And we have like, you know, we've got like a shared building. And so we've got lots of stairs in our in our building. And we had bought all of the recovery modalities like we had like the laser and the boots at home and all of a sudden we were using this stuff because we thought oh like a nice fringe thing to do right and all of a sudden we were like running marathons and hitting prs as training runs and we're like what is going on we are like in our early mid 30s like this should not be happening right and it like idiots we were like oh duh Recovery works. <laughs> yeah, know, like, right. So important. I tell people all the time. It, Talk about know, it. People, besides like pro and collegiate, they weren't really doing it yet. So we like flipped really our Because this was model. seven years ago. Yeah, yeah. This time it was like more like eight. And okay. we were like, oh, okay. So what if we made half our space recovery? Like what would that look like? And we went to like some professional training facilities and looked at like the brands that they had and really just looked at like what would it look like to create almost like a home for athletes and then I, I remember walking into what we now are now sitting in right our current space which you know indoor heated parking I was like I don't even know what the inside looks like but I'm <laughs> sold right here right <laughs> this is amazing parking <laughs> and we walked in and I was like yes um and you know creating kind of like this living room with this boot lounge and this little cove for hot and cold pools and absolutely having training as part of it but initially we're starting really heavy with that recovery slant it helped us right it it, it it was the thing that was new and the thing that people weren't doing yet and it really kind of gelled yeah yeah i think i, I can see why people gravitate towards that because there's with recovery and specializing in recovery it's almost as if you really care about the athletes and you do you definitely do and i've seen it but it's like yeah you're training people you're breaking them down you're forcing them in there uh in an uncomfortable place whereas recovery there's a lot of love that's placed into like i care about it's not just about breaking you down it's not just about pushing you to your limits I, you like, I also care about you and i want you to be healthy and i think that's where like a uh, traditional gym or traditional personal training situation, you might miss that opportunity to share that love. And I think recovery is where you get to it. I, this is probably horrible. And stop me if you don't want me to uh, make this correlation. I love where this is going. I'm already excited. <laughs> <laughs> but and I, it's as a parent, this is what I'm thinking about. But it's almost like spanking your child and then hugging him afterwards. You know, it's like there was pain first. But just know that I love you. No. I'm speaking no athletes um, <laughs> physically, but maybe metaphorically we are. <laughs> exactly. You know, it's like, I got you. I love you. I care about you. Come sit here and have some ice cream. And don't do that again. Right. <laughs> Should I be giving them ice cream? I'm failing. That's what we need. Like, yeah, you also have a cafe. Let's not skip out on that because Ian and I both just drank some protein smoothies because, you know, for those listening, you know Wednesdays are also our strength days with uh, Ian. It's Kayla for you. For me, it's uh, Mama K. I saw uh, Mama K fit today. Too. Is she fit though? She fine. Is she fit in, in I mean, chocolate? She chocolate, fit, yes. fine and fit. Okay? Yes, all of it. All the things. All nah, of it. she fine. I didn't even say hi. <laughs> I didn't even, I legitimately did not say hi. Like, people think I'm like this super outgoing person. But no, cute girl. Beautiful I've learned, woman scared me. I've learned this about him because <laughs> he's told me before. And so I was like, women's hair. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what he's talking about. <laughs> I, love, I love that episode. Yeah. <laughs> we listened to that yeah. part like three times. <laughs> I cannot. Here ter- I cannot. Terrifies yeah, you. Shut yeah. out. Shut out. It's everywhere. All the time. Anyway. But yes, Kalita, you fine. <laughs> yes. She shouts I out. Shouts out to her. She's I doing. Yeah, that's why I said you need to come through once you're done with Kayla's workouts. You know what I mean? You, there's a spot for you. I, guess, I told you know? y'all. I'm going to be pedaling my way on yeah, up there. Come on. I, I told you I'll give you a ride. Yeah, you're right. But you'll be up here by the time you're right. No, you won't. No, I won't. You won't figure this we, out. Yes. And because, like... You get a shuttle. Yeah. Everybody is going to be 
beautiful. By the end, like everyone, Marathon this day? holiday season, when everyone goes back to their families, Listen. they're going to be like, what? It's, 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 it's. Because you always talk about being the finest cousin. Yeah, every year. By holiday <laughs> season. I'm undefeated. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? This is what <laughs> training does for you. Marathon training. Training champ. Self appointed training champ. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. okay, so I, I I know Ian and I both have our own questions. Uh, I'm not gonna lie to you, we did not talk about our questions. <laughs> no. You know, but we're here. I but I have a question now that we've talked about about Edge. I would love to also just like discuss road less travel. Oh, just yeah. Just because this is also where we're connected and how we facilitated so much community throughout the pandemic, but then also continue to do so this year. Um, and I mean, for those listening, Edge and Gumbo Fit have partnered. We put we put together a, road, a, a race series called Road Less Traveled, and we start what it was at July. 2020 yeah I think that was our first 5K. yeah and then we within the span of nine months we put together six races and so that included a marathon on the day that the Chicago marathon would have been a half marathon on the day that the, the half uh, the Chicago half marathon would have been so like we, we literally gave people a reason to continue training lace up show up be with community safely and and it like it just kept people going and yeah. so I would say though like my experience Robin what with, with you and Becca and now Trevor and even Brian, your husband, like, like you guys have so much experience in, in, uh, race curation and programming. And so like, I mean, you, it, having you as a partner was so beneficial and we came together and it was just like, it felt like perfect. Um, and so I just, I'm curious, honestly, about like, when did you do your first race? And also like, what like how did you gain that experience to now be where you are where we were able to also like come together and kind of create an, an entire series you mean like our first race as edge yeah because i mean i know because yeah. like the first race i did with you guys was polar pug. pug yeah i would say that they were all kind of like that so yeah. we had maybe three flying pugs before we did Polar Pug, and, and it really, that came from, the, like, the trail world of, like, just wanting to get people on trail and, like, do something fun, mm -hmm. and it was very, very lighthearted to start. Like, yeah. it was, like, sign up, like, 20 bucks. <laughs> sign up, <laughs> show up. <laughs> we had, like, a grab bag that people grabbed, like, random prizes out of. Um, but super, super fun. We had pugs at every mile marker. like With it, outfits on. With outfits on. For sure. And it was just... It like was, real live pugs? Yeah. Pugs. I mean, ours. It's not that hard. They're pugs. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, with, like, and wings on and stuff. Members with pugs, you know, like, yeah. it's just kind of fun to, like, think about pugs on trail because that's not where they belong. Let's be clear. <laughs> um, <laughs> at all. <laughs> yes. So flying pug was in the fall and the spring, and we mm -hmm. probably did, like, three or four of those. And then, and then polar pug. And then the pandemic hit. So it wasn't maybe as much runway as... Like, you, you know, you think. Okay. Because it's crazy to think that Polar Pug was the same year as Road Less Traveled, but it was, it was early 2020. Okay, and pause on this one, because you didn't run Polar Pug. You weren't even there. I, so I, cool. I, I, I didn't know You didn't even, okay, Ian, I'm going to bring it back so everybody, because it, it was me, uh, Cicely, um, I'm trying to think if Picasso was there. Picasso was there. Picasso was there. Mike was there. Mike was there. Someone else was there. But it was, <laughs> the snow went up to our calves, and wow. it was on a trail in the woods. I love it. And it, and I, I trail, and when I tell you, I trailed Cicely the entire time. You know how Me, fast she is? Cicely is ridiculous. I was behind her the entire time. Like, I surprised myself. I'm, yeah, you know, funny. Minnesota. Slightly. Yeah, I know. I'm not, you know what I mean? I used to cross-country ski. I'm used to the snow. But yes, it was like... It was the deepest snow I've ever ran in. That's great. And it was also just like... It was only like three degrees out. And it was very, very... I had two hats on and several layers on. And I looked like a fool. And uh, Mike without taking photos... Was it... Yeah, Mike taking photos. And I just remember like seeing the photos afterwards. And I was just like, I look crazy. 
Oh, I like you look ab- most I look photos. absolutely crazy because because I had like the polar I had like my hat on and then I had a polar hat no I had like the polar pug hat on that she gave us before the race and then I put my other hat on top of it and I was just like but it was this? great it was a good race but it also was just like oh my god this is so hard but I also felt really good afterwards this this sounds very yeah. on brand. Robin. Yeah, I know. This and then, I know. It was such because a like good I, race. I tell and people. Becca, this was Becca. Yeah, well, child. see, yeah, and I'm, I, let's give a quick shout out to Becca. I know Ian, you're not really familiar with her, but she has, she is the one that like within row less travel planning, like she's just an advocate for all the trails, and she's like really like, she's like type A. Got it together. Got it. She's type A, and and I and we love it, and she's just amazing, and I feel like she's she's very low key. Um, you either know her or you don't. Yeah, I've met her, but I've never yeah, worked with but her. But you should get to know her. She's yeah. a wealth of knowledge. That's, that's Just dope. like Rob. She's a doer. Yeah. That's she dope. gets shit done. That's dope. That's dope. Yeah. But with my running theme okay. you know, about Coach Robin, I love her. I will <laughs> never, ever run a race that she plans ever again. Why? <laughs> okay, because that's now because you didn't not. train for Hills, Ian, is it my problem? And this is, brings us back that to Road Less Travel. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God! His finisher picture. Oh my God! <laughs> there, I would have had to leave the entire Midwest <laughs> to train for that marathon. That was the craziest marathon. If I was running flat, I would have been sub four hours. If I was running the regular Chicago <laughs> route, sub four hours. We told you I did hills. it. I did it in four hours and thirty minutes. That's so and good. That's like that. fantastic That's so with that good. elevation. That was, that was like five minutes faster than my previous year. I mean, five minutes slower than my previous year on a, a way yep. more flatter surface. And so I was like, I must have been in the best shape. That one hill. Yeah. Rolling. That mountain <laughs> it was, of a hill it, it's steep that we had to run up several times. I uh, need to know what the route is in person <laughs> prior to me signing up. For one of her races. Well, okay. But when I was done, don't get me wrong, I can talk shit. When I was done, I, I've nobody can tell me anything because I, I felt the strongest that I've ever felt. Oh, did you go farther than you thought you could? You're stronger oh, than you wow. thought you could? Wow, look at that. Yes, <laughs> yes. The yes, course did. did it. Shouts out to Matthew Champa for getting me up that hill that last yeah, time. Yeah, he was yeah. great. Shouts out he to him. He landed, I literally was on his shoulder. Well, look, me up. So like, it, was, it was crazy. For our listeners, when I mentioned that Road Less Travel Marathon that would have been on the, the Chicago Marathon date, this is what Ian was talking about. I'll also say, Ian, you jumped in like, oh, I got this. Yeah. And it was, I mean, how many weeks did you train? Ten weeks. Okay, right. Every yeah, everybody was jumping. Ten I'm like, giving him the this. Robin right eyebrow up. Right? <laughs> yeah, <it was> <laughs> yeah, no, no, you cannot give me the eyebrow because this is also the same person. It's like ten weeks. That's you enough time to train for a marathon. <laughs> <Same> <laughs> time. Right. That's it what was. the coach it, told me. This, True. this True. trail was a loop. How, what was the loop? Three point seven miles. And so, how many loops did you do? Seven. Seven. Set, yeah. So it was pretty intense. And if you were not running uphill, you were running downhill. <laughs> there was a moment of flat that's probably about as long as this little ass table in front of us, <laughs> where cars would enter into the parking lot. <laughs> And that was it. That was it. <laughs> <laughs> to the parking lot. <laughs> that was it. And after that, you was either running down and or up. We told you there were hills. Yeah. Nah, you it did. was pretty intense. And, and yeah. It was It was crazy, but... How I, great is Chicago in a feel? Listen, I, I wish I was training to run Chicago this year. I'm, I'm, I might be running LA this year. Though. Yeah, we're doing a captain's oh, trip. Oh, fun! Yeah, yeah, quick detour. Like we're so the Gum, Gumbo Fit captains and like Ian's, he's just family because he was a captain, you know. And then we realized, you know, like you know, we all have our own things, and so you, but you, you know, you still family, and so all of the Gumbo Fit captains are gonna go we we're like okay we can't do the chicago marathon no. like i mean mike is because mike is mike he's a robot he's a yeah. robot exactly you know um i hope he gets a dog one day so that he he's responsible for something else <laughs> other than himself. and it'll slow oh, him down a little bit you know what i mean make him a little bit you know like grounded um and so Mike is probably going to do Chicago and la but la is in november and we kind of want to just go out there and then 
Yeah. The week after. Oh my god! I don't even know we want to talk to you about. You that. know, we, <laughs> I'm just gonna say there's a festival in, in Las Vegas, and we plan to be there. This That's is the it. longest <laughs> trip ever. And Ian's like, wait a minute. Because I agreed I to this trip, and I did not realize that it was like <laughs> it's ten days. Ten days. <laughs> I think we all need. I'm forcing days. everybody to do a vacation. I think we all need to. Yes. Days. Yeah. 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 Yes, yes. Especially after Take this training days. season. Because you're planning hella of events that you're not telling anybody about. Yeah. And, yeah. When's and that I've, I've only yeah. said enough to make me accountable and stuff like that. I'm also very scared that I'm not going to be able to deliver. Well, then this way we won't know either way. Yeah, exactly. exactly. But yeah. Your wedding day, keep, keep nobody your knows the details. Right. That's, but not, that's me. <laughs> we're just, we're happening. It, everything is going to happen. I love it. Shouts out to everybody who's making me put these things together. But I want to run the LA Marathon. I feel like after running your marathon, you're be great. I can handle any marathon. Okay, can I say it's our marathon? Okay, ROT marathon. He's I'm not pointing no at me, people. I know. <laughs> I'm not giving you, no, I'm giving you zero it's, credit it's, for yeah. that marathon. In my mind, that was the no, Coach it's Robin Ro- it's Coach Robin and Becca, a hundred percent. Yes, <laughs> I, I I loved it. It, it. I did go further than I think I could because I. I, I, 10 weeks first of all training for 10 weeks and then doing that I, I wish fantastic. I need to go back and look at that elevation and how high I ran or how it works and stuff like that but it, it, it was the most challenging marathon and honestly marathons to me are more than a race and I, I think I've said on this podcast like every single year that I run a marathon it's become a tradition for me because it's an opportunity for me to remind, to defeat myself and also remind myself. Absolutely. It's like that I am capable of anything. And I, I mean, nobody listening would know my story as, as well as I do, but I just, I'm not an athlete. They, I don't you have. You are a, an athlete. Okay. By, by Bowerman standards, yes, I have yes. a body. I'm an athlete. But like, <laughs> I didn't. I mean, yeah, I was I was at Foster Park on the swim team, but it was mostly for the Saturday pizzas. Like and it was like one summer, you know, like I don't have a history running or training for anything in high school. I mean I went to art school for college. It does a four thirty on the RLT course okay. is a gifted runner, my yeah. friend. I, I enjoyed it and I'm grateful and it feels like I can handle LA. And I'm going to, everybody yes. who is going to LA to run a 5K needs to get their stuff together and run a marathon. Are you looking at hoarding? Uh, there's a few people I'm looking at. I'm just trying not to overdo it, you know? Like, I'm just trying to, is like. Is there a half option? Didn't see. Okay. Or is it just 5K or marathon? It's literally 5K, 5K, 5K on Saturday and Ugh. marathon on Sunday. So I've considered. Quite stretch. Would you go to another state to run a 5K? I just want to have fun, it's a vacation. No, not to run a 5K alone, but to do it with a group, maybe. Picasso. Candace. Right? Kelsey. All I'm saying is, is that you got to fly in on the 4th for the 5K and spend 70 more dollars on your plane ticket. When you can fly in for the marathon a day later. Better PR the 5K. Okay, so (laughs) (laughs) So if I have an extra month to train for the marathon, like, we'll see how it goes. I have shin splints all the time, and I just need to work on my recovery. Oh, if we only had a place. I know. (laughs) I know, I know, I know, I know. Um, I'm trying to see. What what other questions you got over there? Um, I don't have any other questions. I do. I was just... Um, I was reading, and I don't have my glasses on, and why am I trying to read without my glasses? But, you know, I found you, because before before we got on the mic, I talked about the fact that when I was doing my Googles, how consistent you were across e- anybody who interviewed you, anybody who spoke to you, whether it was video, print, I mean, when they asked you for tips, that's, I'm not even going to ask you for your tips, because it's like, you said it a hundred times, and it's the exact same tips everywhere but what are they now i'm curious one the one that stuck out to me was uh, um was the one when i read you were in the new york times shouts out they called me really when was that recently like a few weeks yeah yeah, okay wait where did where did you post about it yeah yeah it was on ig did i miss it i posted a picture of me with my mouth open very excited (laughs) 
Oh, I missed it. Congratulations. Oh, thank First you. of all. That was a big one. That's huge. But it it talked about um so it says one of the tips that you gave was identify your current level of fitness. And this is about going into a marathon plan. plan. Picking, yep. Yeah, picking a marathon plan. And it said, uh, start by tallying your mileage from the past four to eight weeks of training. Um, then look for a training plan that starts to no more than 10 to 20% above that number. A big jump in mileage is a recipe for injury. And it, it really stuck out to me because... Um, when every year that I train, especially even my first, my first year I was a little bit more receptive of it because it was like I, yeah. that would have been my first three miles, my first four miles, and so on yeah. and so forth. But every year that I start marathon training, it's kind of like it's kind of like driving in the snow every year. Everybody forgets how to drive in the snow <laughs> every That's single year. I don't care if you grew up it. in the Midwest, but everybody forgets how to do it. And so I get into marathon training, and the trainer says. Your long run is three miles this week. Your long run is four or five miles. I was like, dude, I do seven miles every Sunday. I'm not doing your training plan. <laughs> That's a recovery. This way. Right. And it's like, respect it. You know, slowly build the foundation, slowly grow. Because in the beginning of the plan, you know, it's more about, it's more about adding volume in days versus how many miles you're getting in one run. Yeah. And if you want to expound on that a little bit more, add any more quick bits to it, go right ahead. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I think especially now when people are coming out of 2020, 2021 and, and leaning into races that are very likely to happen, you know, we're dealing with a lot of different levels of fitness. And so just making sure that you're really realistic. I mean, with your numbers and, and I'm one of these people, right? Like I run and it's not always an intensity run. A lot of times it's just the recovery run, but I still need to tabulate those numbers and figure out what the heck I've been doing. Cause we were so loosey goosey for so long. Mm. So just, you know, running those averages and figuring out what you're starting at and then being able to truly start, you know, whether it's a 10 week marathon build, I'm not recommending that. <laughs> um, you know, whether it's, you know, a 12 week half marathon build all the way up to a 20 week marathon build, as long as it matches kind of what you've currently been doing, don't run past it. You don't need mm -hmm. to, you know, there are intensities in there, in the training plan, any good training plan is going to have those pillars of speed, tempo, and distance. You don't need to go beyond what it's writing. You're going to get to the heavy load. You don't need to get to it yet. Right. We would, uh, one of my training philosophies is that we would always rather have you 10% undertrained than 1% overtrained. Once you cross into that overtraining mode, yeah, like you can't use any of the fitness you've been doing. Right. We want you to be able to use the fitness, which mm. means we need you to use the periodization, which is the build and the cutback and the build and the cutback and the build and the cutback and eventually a tape from the race. Yeah, because yeah, I'm really interested. To see how some of our runners, some of the gumbo runners, um, really deal with the um, um, after peak week, the uh, what is it? What is taper. that period called? Taper. Yeah, yeah, the taper weeks and stuff like that. Because there are a few runners who, no matter how much we say, slow down the speed up. Every single run is at a ridiculous pace. Um, uh, some of the runs are, I, and I see them on Instagram when they post their runs, some yeah. of the runs are longer than the plan right, says right. and stuff like that. And it tapering, the taper period is really important because it allows you to keep your cardio, it allows you to keep the endurance, but it saves your legs yep. for the race day. And it's, it's that and the recovery periods, I don't think people truly get when yeah. I'm speaking to them how important those things are and so it please tell nerdy. them you want, you want the nerdiness yes so when we run slow or long like a long steady run the biggest currency from a marathon perspective is what we call mitochondrial density which is basically building up we we need it like a bank account we need you to build it build it build it build it build it, build it. and when you run fast you draw it down so we, we need you, right? There's a whole like 80, 20 rule of 80% of your runs being, that's like a huge proportion, right? But 
really the vast majority of your run should be that long steady run because that is what builds up that mitochondrial density it allows your body to it really adapt to endurance and delivering blood and oxygen to your muscles which from a marathon perspective that really is the number one job of your body now you can do speed and tempo and even some color on long runs right to to dial in form and power but without endurance you're kind of sunk right, right. because that's all 26.2 is yeah. yeah that's all 26.2 is it's very hard mentally for people i think to bridge that gap of like oh i'm running faster during the week on my intensity runs but then i'm running really slow on my recovery runs. so how do i meet in the middle just trust the process yeah, <laughs> yeah. just trust the process always think about it like that bank account we need you to run really easy so that when to build up a bank account so that when we get to race day we can draw it all the way down but yeah. if you run your recovery or your long efforts too hard you're going to be draw or even in the heat right that's another factor that it's just mm -hmm. like so freaking hot out right now we're going to be drawing down that deposit and we don't want to do that we want it we want to keep our bank account really really high so that we can use it when when we need to um true story our first season of edge run club i did not give good enough parameters to people to run easy enough and wow. then we had people it was a cooler summer too but we had people running marathon plus 15 to 30 when they really should have been running marathon pace plus like 45 to 90. They were excited and I just kind of let them do it because it was really a great group. But when it came to marathon day, they cracked early and yeah. I was like, dang, I let them run their easy runs too hard. Yeah. You know, yeah. I didn't, I didn't crack down on it as much as I could. So now we have a pace that's called easy AF, which you can do the acronym. Sexy pace. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, no, Not it's like your, pace. everyone's easy <laughs> AF is like literally marathon plus 45 to almost, you know, two minutes. Yeah, and yeah. it should be super conversational. Mm -hmm. And 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 when we write it, we expect people to do it. And and really telling them the why, I think, is is the reason that people adhere to it. So even this last week, we had, I think, seven miles. And I was like, okay, here's the deal. I don't write that many long steady runs for Saturdays. You have seven miles easy AF. Yes, yes. If I come up to you, you better be able to sing me two stanzas of any song. Mm -hmm. If you can't, you're going too hard. You're never going to see this pace and this distance again mm -hmm. through all of training. Yeah. And they, they did it. It was great. I'm, sure. I'm taking that note, and I'm going to say that this Saturday. Yeah, and, the, and for anybody listening, when she says plus a minute, that's not if your phrase day pace is eight minutes she means run a seven minute. No, no she no. says run plus. nine yeah. minutes. Plus, stuff. plus, plus. It's marathon plus yeah. 45 seconds to 120 seconds. I love it. Yeah. And yeah, I think that's something where, you know, in 2019, when uh, Ian and I met, and I met all everybody else for the first time, like Candace, Mike, Picasso, um, Kate, like, um, the other Kayla mm -hmm. um, and, and you know the captain's group kind of was formed and we all uh, we trained for the marathon together it was just five of us at the end of the marathon training it was ten of us um, but yeah we were able to like keep each other accountable because it was just a very small group yeah, and absolutely. like people like Candace, for instance we always call her like steady because that's what she is she's a, and she kept me steady and like really helped with my training because she would take every long run like super slow and I used to think like she was slow but she finished that marathon so much faster than I finished that marathon <laughs> on, on, on the day came real density yeah no, she was <laughs> like no this is how you do it and I'm like okay so um yeah I think that that's a good reminder to remind our runners I think I will give them credit though because there are a lot of people who are listening and, but I think that there's a lot of runners and just a lot of like, fit, you know, people who are in like fitness enthusiasts who in some, because we have a couple trainers like in our group. Absolutely. And they like intensity. You know, we have a site, like a, a cyclist trainer. Mm -hmm. She likes intensity. 
Um, and it's like, I don't blame them for that. But like I, the other day I sent out the, an email giving, or like I sent out the plan for the rest of July of like our mileage and stuff. And I was just like, and I added, and I intentionally added like three optional rest days where they can pick one or two if they need it. But yeah. I said, don't pick more than like, don't do all three, <laughs> like just pick one or two really, you know? Um, but I'm like, I have to remind them, like, I'm like, for you overachievers, it doesn't mean just because I have an option for activity every day of the week doesn't mean do something every day right. of the week. You need to take rest. You need to recover. Like, you, I, like I literally am like, or rest. <laughs> like, right. Because it's like, you do just sit down sometimes, you know, or go, and we've talked about this with our mobility workouts with Kayla, uh, with uh, Kalita here is like, you know, if you can, if you can get a massage, get a professional massage. It'll Absolutely. be really great. If you can get in some boots, get in some boots. Thanks. Thanks for, um, Nike, you know, and the, um, Therabolts, but like all these things are really important, but it's like, I think recovery, even for me, sometimes I like, I'm slipping on it right now. Cause I decided I'm not doing the marathon. I'm like, oh. you know, but it's like, even with my marathon runners, I'm like, how can I get them to Take the slow pace seriously. Maybe if you want to come out one of these Saturdays. Yeah, <laughs> I'm down. You know what I mean? Because I'm like, we need some we need some reinforcement. And they hear it from us all the time. So it's like almost like a broken record. So it might be helpful to get them to hear it from like yeah, a new face. They, Saturday mornings, yeah. there are quite a few runners yeah. who are running, running. Hard, hard, hard. And it's yeah. like, You don't bro, need third like intensity. This, is, yeah. this isn't... <laughs> A few months ago when we were just meeting up just to do it as a community run like you're training for a day for a specific goal you do not need to burn yourself out every single week and every single saturday and it it this is not a 30 minute class this isn't right something you're just it's a long doing. game yeah, yeah this is the long game and so if, if you're listening to this and you are that person you know be honest you know if, if you if you're not sure Go back, check your lap. And you know how fast you are, and slow down. Well, and if you're listening to this and you run with other fellow trainer, like uh, marathoners this year, it's like you use this as a reminder to remind them as well. Because I, th- you know, everybody naturally clumps up and groups up. So it's yep. like, I last week we had uh, it was and I'm gonna shout, shout y'all out, Paige and Anastasia, love y'all. They ran together, and when they came back, I was just like. They they're like oh that was really hard because it was seven miles right and I'm like did you think it just slowed down yeah and got your coaching coming yeah, in yeah and I was like you know you can always slow down like if you feel like you're pushing it too hard and you still have mileage to go it's like you can always just like pump the brakes a little brakes a little bit and focus on your breathing you know and it's just like and, and Anastasia was like yeah I was gonna slow down but Paige is next to me and I'm just like okay. Y'all can slow down together. Today ain't race day. Right. It ain't race day. And y'all <laughs> can, can slow down together. You can also help each other be accountable yeah, on the other side. Exactly. So I think that it's, it's a lot of that where I think you're right, Ian. People show up and it's just like they're so used to showing up on a regular Saturday. And it's just like, oh, I'm just getting three or six in or something like that. Just because it's seven doesn't mean that it's just something to play with. It is very much something that you're building on, like you're saying, Coach Robinson. I'm like... Like, yeah. So, I mean, I feel like a broken record. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, and um, uh, we can cut this out if yeah. you don't want me to say this on air, but, you know, I, I believe I told Picasso or Mike, like, I think it would really benefit on Saturdays for, as captains, you guys to decide the pace. Yeah. And run that pace and let them know, like, there should be, if you're training for the marathon, you should not be in front of me. Yeah. You should not finish faster than me if you're training for the marathon and and keep it there. And once they have that mental conditioning, eventually when we get closer to race day and we get further into the main train marathon training program, you won't have to have that conversation. Because mm-hmm. I think there is a mental condition as well, a body conditioning that comes with training for a marathon. I think that's just what some people need because there, there was no transition from regular Saturday meetups to now our marathon training, it just went into it. And maybe people are, you know, just a little confused because it is their first marathon mm-hmm. and they don't under, they might not understand how it works the way we're talking about it now. So, you know, just having that, this is our pace today. This is what we're running. Yeah. Don't go in front of me if you're training for the marathon. And now to make everybody slow down and really, really get it. Yeah. Yeah. 
for sure. It, it'll start to self-regulate, though. Well, we're about to hit 10 time. miles, so they're yeah. going to slow down real quick. And, and they're the going to... Yeah, exactly. Because they they're don't gonna want... They're yeah. going to they hit that mile eight and be walking. It's about to be eight miles, I think, this Saturday. So I think it's eight miles. Is it eight miles? I don't know. I don't you know. know. I feel like it's near... Because near, I know at the end of the month, we're at 12. Don't it's it? getting there, though. Yeah. yeah so doesn't it go up, like, it it might it's, be it's every week? Yeah. yeah, it's about to be, it's like eight and then nine, and then it's a 15K, and then I think it's like, which is like 9.32. I just made the schedule just last night, so I'm just like, it's in my head, but, um, and, then it, and then it's 10, and then it's 12. They're climbing. Yeah, so it's time. I love it. Yeah, so love yeah, slowing down is going to be something that they're forced to do. We're going to be ma- meeting probably at 6.30 versus 7, which will then separate people from the everyday Every Saturday. Yes. And everyone no else. No one likes getting up in the dark. Yeah. <laughs> I always want them to know that. No one Those are no my favorite does. runs. Yeah, but I feel... You're a marathon training yeah. when you start Wait. at night. Some people and are like, you like, do like that. 5K in, 10K in, all of a sudden, the sun just cresses the yeah, lake yeah, front. Yeah. It just peeks out a little yep. bit. Beautiful. And you blink and all of a sudden it's bright outside. Yeah. Yeah. I love those runs. Those are, those are some of my favorite runs. So, so okay. So, Robin, um, what are you... I would. I honestly would love to know, like, if you were to train for something yourself in the coming year, years, or whatever, like, do you have your eyes on something since you're saying that some stuff, like, some of the... You, it sounded like when you were describing the programming at Edge that you were starting to have more time for that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I just love trail. Okay. I mean, for me, like, I'm strongest when we get like to those 50 plus races. I also just love like getting women on trail. I think that's, a, I'm very clear. I'm like, this is one of our objectives is that just getting more women into the distances that they're not very represented in. So yeah. whether it's full Ironman or whether it's, you know, 50 K plus. Um, so yeah, absolutely. 50 mile plus. I'm not going to say a hundred miler right off the bat. Cause I don't, I have you done a hundred miler yet? No, no. hundred K. Um, that's like it's on the radar. Seventy-five miles. Sixty-two. Sixty-two. Okay. Sixty-two. Mm. Um, but you know, I, I mean, I just I love that whole arena. I I also just I, for me personally, it's really important for me to get out onto trail. Just mm-hmm. living in a city and you know dealing with mayhem, like being able to go out once a week and just have you know several hours of my own time is. It has been just a really great reset and frankly makes me a much stronger runner and you know being able to use all of those fitness deposits towards something is is awesome so yeah i mean this summer we're pacing a friend who's doing level 100 for the lead man series and i'm like well i'm already going to be running 30 miles with them so i might as well you know like train for it right wow. and for me that's like the best part i i love coaching road i love training trail Okay. And and that's been a really great that's why when you ask me marathon questions, I'm like, I don't know how many I've done, right? Because I don't yeah. I don't run road that much personally anymore. I coach it a lot more than I than I train it. Okay. Got you, yeah. got you, got you. And I, I throw some dirt on it. Right well, I was just gonna say if someone wants to come to Edge and check it out, like what yeah. would you suggest that they do or like is there any like special offer you give new newcomers? Yeah, or? totally. So yeah. we I mean people will more and more people are just coming in off the street, which yeah. is kind of funny to me because it's like, oh yeah, stuff's changed. Mm-hmm. Um so we have Vax Pass, so as long as people have, you know, their vaccination status, then we can give them a bracelet and then everybody's all, you know. Kumbaya. Yeah. <laughs> I love you, I love um, where the bracelets sport it. And then, um, you know, for the most part, we have usually a seven or 14 day trial going on at any given time. So if people want to try us out, you know, for classes and recovery, they can always do that. Um, they can DM us on Instagram. You can pop in. We have an awesome um, membership administrator that helps with all of that too. So she's been like critical in all of this like yeah. kind of reopening phase um but yeah i mean if nothing else just walk in the front doors and, okay. and don't be scared and then <laughs> in, if you don't have any other questions my last question is tell us about your pugs oh <laughs> just real quick because I, pugs are the mascot of edge they are so just you know expect it the monkeys so we, we love dogs, love dogs. And I don't even think we necessarily were pug people to begin with, but we had our first two pugs, Bruce and June, who were just like the best dogs of all time. And Bruce, you know, had no eyes, literally 100% blind and just was... I met Bruce. Oh, he's the best. And just, you know, 
fear less, brave more is his mantra that we gave him. And, and it just rings true. And, you know, I love it. I think about it all the time. And yeah. little Junie, his little sidekick. And we lost both of them literally back to back, which was not, not a great phase. But what a fantastic moment for kind of our edge community to just, you know, help us grieve and mourn and, and figure out how to move forward. Um, and now we have, <laughs> because we're idiots, um, we have three. <laughs> so we had two, um, two boys that were like, why not, you know, like have two boys. Cause that's a fun combo. And then quickly realized that we really do miss having a girl. So we just added little miss Pearl. So our oldest Pearl, is yeah. uh, Pearl is ridiculous. She's yeah. like a little, little ninja running around with teeth. Um, we've got Tank, who's two, Duke, who's one, and then little Pearl, who's like 13 weeks. Yeah, so, so, so cute. I it's, love them. It's good mojo. I love bringing them in. They get so excited to come in. and We're just so lucky that we can, you know, have our dogs here and share them with people. And, mm -hmm. you know, when I coach strength classes, they're with me during the, in like the warm up, And then whoever's working knows that they have to come get them like three minutes in. And it's yeah. just like <laughs> the Buffalo pickup, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But they're just so much joy. And, you know, for anyone thinking about, you know, getting a dog or, should is it the right time? Just do it. <laughs> just yeah. that, this, that's for Mike. If you're so, listening, Mike Brown, get we're your sh uh, to you. Shih Tzu. Is it a Shih Tzu? No, Shiba Inu. Shibu. Sh what? Shiba Inu, right? Shiba. What's a it? Shiba dog. Shiba it's Inu. Japanese. Oh, the one that be dressed up in the street with? No, they don't bark. They look like little foxes, and they don't. They're bark. really, really cute. Oh, okay. it's really okay. cute. perfect dog from Matt. Matt. I love yeah, it. Mike. Really yeah. good, good, good dogs. Right. But yeah, do it, do it for sure. Yeah. I mm -hmm. and if you ever. You know, have your dog around me. I will probably hug it and kiss it. Yeah. Oh, oh <laughs> that's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, but you know, before we go, because to one, I, I definitely want to give a shout out to your husband. Yes. Yeah, like I've met him a couple of times. Right. He's awesome. He's good peeps. We'll yeah. keep him. Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> like a really, really cool dude. Really good dude. And you guys built this up together, right? Yeah. Um, We're that's, here. Did I say it again? I said, we're here. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> Seven years in. That's dope. I, I, I enjoy, like, watch, well, not watching you, but, like, I enjoy hearing about you and your husband, Courtney and Matthew, working together and, and building these brands and these these companies together. Like, it's it's inspiring. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm, I'm a hopeless romantic and stuff like that. <laughs> you know, I, I would love to, to, to find mine and, and, and grow in, in this business world together and stuff like that but i think it's 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 super dope because it's it it brings that feeling of family into the business yeah. because it is started by a family yeah no, that's and that's a great what point. i really like that's a great point and i think too just i always say like i can't imagine doing this and not having someone to bounce ideas off of like i can't imagine doing it solo um and that's just again like such a privileged position yeah. to be in because i can always be like hey what do you think about this yeah <laughs> yeah or even yes. just have a breakdown oh and just be like weekly. this yeah. is really hard yeah <laughs> <laughs> and have someone else understand it which yeah. i know ian you and i have talked about that too just yes. it's yeah. it's good and that, that's why we're in this together right like that's the kind of the whole point of life is to have that shared experience and mm -hmm. be able to you know have that translatable you know knowledge so that you don't feel so isolated all the time which is just huge when you're building a business yeah yes most definitely mm -hmm. i understand <laughs> welcome but, to um, the shit show right. <laughs> yes. oh my gosh oh my god we're not gonna go there I had, I, I, somebody walked up to me and hugged me after our last episode <laughs> you deserve it yes i needed it yeah. <laughs> But I don't know. I mean, that's that's pretty much all I had. Um, like I said, I, I did everything I could to not make sure I asked you the same questions that I saw you get a hundred times. No, it's good. <laughs> I'm glad I was somewhat consistent. Yeah. Yes, yes. But mm -hmm. thank you. We really appreciate having you on yeah. and everything like that. And, and uh, if you meet, if you come across Robin, don't feel intimidated. Say hello. Oh my ask goodness. your questions. Talk me, talk me about pugs. We'll you be know. in. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. DM me, coach.robin. Mm -hmm. I yes. love it. I love it. Do you want to drop your handle? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, drop your IG yeah. handle. Yeah, so Edge is at Edge Athlete Lounge. Um, these, of course, are all Instagram. Um, Coaching one is coach.robin with a Y, so R-O-B-Y-N, 
And then, of course, if you want to follow the yeah, plugs. Please. Pug Covery, like recovery, right. but Pug Covery. It's for a good laugh. Great, great entertainment. I, I mean, if I want a laugh and a smile, that's what I look at every day. <laughs> Clowns. I love yeah. the clowns. It's great. <laughs> it's really great. Okay, so well, this is our first interview. I don't necessarily know how to stop talking and close this out. <laughs> um, but I think we are done. Yeah. And yeah, I don't yeah, know. I'll I think see you guys tomorrow. Yeah, I mean, we'll next see, week. yeah, we'll see you next week. And thank you, Robin, for coming out and like staying up and coming back to Edge and giving us this space to use. And like, I think ultimately this is. We eventually will definitely have you come back. Oh man, thanks and, for having and, me. and having you as the first guest is an honor. <laughs> it's an honor for me too. I can't believe I'm the first. I'm pumped. I can't wait to see who else you guys have. I'll be listening.